this the day you are? Like no, because that's like the world's worst excuse. It's Monday. <laughs> like, that's going to be you for the rest of your life. <laughs> no, I'm, this is how I'm starting my lecture. Uh-huh. It's Monday. What if I showed up, right? I'm supposed to have energy and get you excited about terrorism. Like, <laughs> yeah, listen, it was a, kind of a rough weekend for me. The kids were sick. And it's just had some family stuff going on, so... We're going to, I mean, I guess I'm kind of prepared for, it's going to be terrorism today. Um, you guys might think that terrorism is like a new thing. Wow, this is very impressive. It's not. It's been going on for a thousand years. Um, <laughs> who, who do I sound like? Oh no! Oh God, no! Please, no. No. Don't, don't compare me to those guys. No, no, just like that. Is that how we really? Yeah, yeah just about. Okay, so uh, I've got this. Is was meant? I made this over. Um, I had hoped that this was going to be one of the big topics. I don't think it's going to be one of the big topics. Uh, but so I'm going to just sort of glaze through. There's a crap ton, a metric crap ton of information in this particular 20-minute uh, period, I'm going to glaze over a lot of it. When we think of terrorism right now, 2017, 2018, what are we thinking of? 9-11. Uh, we're still thinking of ISIS. We're still thinking 9-11. We're thinking radical Islamic terrorism. We're thinking about what are the, what are the terrorist opportunities now? Um, what are the most recent terror attacks you remember? Most recent? Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas. Boy, that was glazed over right quick, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. What happened with that? Oh, we don't know anything. His girlfriend fled the country. All right, we're moving on. Like, what? Nothing ever. You want a conspiracy theory? Subway one. Mm. Uh, the sub, sub, which subway one? The New York one, right? Yes. All right. New York subway. Um, we've got all sorts of um, attacks in Paris and London. Cars and trucks are now the new thing. Um, I want you to be aware that terrorism is not new. Terrorism is 2,000 years old. And I'm just going to glaze through a whole bunch of it right quick uh, to give you the idea. Because I think when we're examining terrorism on a micro level, what's happening today, we tend to get very socially, ethnically, religiously targeted. And I think we need to take a step back and see the bigger picture. Okay, so uh, terrorism is not new. Uh, we know that it's been used for years and years and years. Change. Terrorists are fighting for change. Is there an argument to be made yeah. that George Washington was a terrorist? Yeah. What's the argument? He's trying to Overthrow the government? Yeah. Yes. By use of military force? Yes. The founding fathers, all the guys on the dollars? Arguably terrorists. Did they not violently attack another country? Didn't yeah. he was violently attack yeah. I, I mean, I think he was flying a kite with a key, according to legend. <laughs> and George Washington chopped down a cherry tree. And, okay. For centuries we're talking about this. The first known terrorists are right around the time of the birth of Christ, historically speaking. We've got, if you're a fan of history, you understand the Holy Roman Empire for three, four hundred years spread out across most of the known world. You know where Rome is? It's in the center of Italy. The Roman Empire was so big that they had conquered England. That's how much land they had covered. Well, Jewish fighters were resisting Roman occupation as far back as the building of the Colosseum. Uh, and they are terrorist attacks. So Jews, even at the turn of the millennium, were attacking Romans and their own people. So when we see this terrorist against their own people, hey, listen, I'm just going to go with the Roman occupation. It's the easiest thing. No, I'm attacking you now because you're soft and you're converting. So we see terrorism uh, becoming a thing for 2,000 years. Um, if you're a fan of the Assassin's Creed games, you'll know that assassins, uh, 
are this sect uh, that has been defined for hundreds of years. They're tied inextricably with the Knights Templar, which we'll get to see. Uh, assassins, right around the time of 1200 or so AD, um, this point they are a sect of Shia Muslims and they are wanting to be a more radical form. So within the, the uh, Shia community, they are fighting against each other. I don't like what you're doing. You won't listen to me if I tap you on the shoulder. So I got to hit you in the head with a hammer. That's the definition of terrorism. As it has been for years and years and years. We need this to change. We need this to change. We need this to change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! Now you're listening. Okay? And now it goes from there. Because a lot of times change, peaceful change, is really difficult and slow. Violent change, a lot easier. People tend towards that. Okay, so... A lot of the first 1,500 years of terrorism, and arguably a lot of the terrorism now, is under the name of a god, all right? In the name of a god. Now, there will, there's basically three reasons that terrorists engage. Religion, land, government. Many of those times, those three are intertwined completely. Religion, government, and land, especially when we talk about on third two, that's a lie. Wednesday, we're going to talk about the history of the conflict in the Middle East. Government, land, religion. In an area where two peoples claim all three is theirs in the same space. Righteously claiming it. That's where we get people defending to the death. So early Christians, um, listen. There's going to be stuff on here about uh, Muslims, Christians, Catholics. I am not condemning uh, any. I'm just presenting historical information. All right? So don't get offended and go running to the church and say Gates is teaching heresy. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's fact that right around 1000 AD, Christians began cleansing the continent of pagans. If you weren't Worshipping the Christian God, you are a heathen, and you need to be removed. Removed means what? Killed. Okay? You got one chance to convert. Do you wish to convert? No. Cleanse her. <laughs> you don't want to be cleansed. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's not like getting a bath. Uh, you should consider a bath in your own blood. Okay? Um... Religious Inquisition as terrorism has been this way for thousands of years. Uh, the Huguenots in France. Uh, this is particularly interesting because this is the Catholic Church. Catholics versus Protestants has been... Are Catholics in the room? We're aware of the Catholic versus Protestant issue, all right? And it goes back forever. Do the Protestants have serious gripe with Catholics? Yes. Why? Okay, so the Pope ordered a cleansing. Let's get rid of all the Protestants in France. Uh, that's problematic if you're Protestant, but you are in the wrong. From the view of the Catholics, you are not following the right path. So... Challenged by papal authority, that's the Pope and Roman Catholic agenda. They're going to continue being good Christians. The Christian life is not just rituals, prayers, and pilgrimages. It's more than that. So you've got two conflicting points of view under one God. All right? Well, when this relates to violence, now we've got all sorts of issues. In Catholic France, famous St. Uh, Bartholomew's Day Massacre, uh, we're talking tens of thousands killed. Why? Based on their religion. That's no different than the terrorism that's happening today. Killed based on religion. There have been more people killed in the name of God in the history of the world 
than in wars over land. And those are the two biggest causes of death in the history of civilization. Killing in the name of God, and you have something I wanted. Okay, so this happened. Here's a couple of numbers for you. Uh, the Pope celebrated the Bartholomew's Day Massacre. Um, Protestant population decreased from 20% of the French population to 2%. That's a cleansing of a people. Terrorism, yes, right? If you are so afraid that you convert, that's terrorism as well. So we've got, we've got all sorts of ca um, terrorism in the name of God. Uh, the fight over the Holy Land, I'm going to really cruise through because my lecture on Wednesday is going to cover this greatly. Um, we're going to have the Christian Crusades, vice versa, Islamic Jihad. These are the Knights Templar, right? They were originally charged with protecting pilgrims on the journey to the Holy Land. Uh, it turned into Crusades, which we'll talk about as well. Crusades to reclaim the Holy Land. The Holy Land is wanted by three different groups of people, Christians, Jews, and Muslims. There's going to be a fight Eventually, we'll find that what they decided is, okay, we're going to draw lines through the city. <laughs> this quarter is going to be for you guys, and this quarter is going to be for you guys. And, but you have that over there. Yeah, well, we don't have this over here. And that's eventually what they decided. They're going to quarter the city. Uh, we'll get to that. So we see crusades over 200 years in the Holy Land. Um, Knights Templar are inextricably intertwined with this. Um, but... By definition, that was terrorism as well. So let's take a look at two different types of terrorism that have happened. We've got the Northern Ireland conflict, which I'm going to talk about. Any Irish in the room? Okay, besides me. Okay, two Irishmen in the room. Uh, Northern Ireland uh, versus Ireland is kind of a big deal. Um, if you're Irish, you don't particularly love the Northern Ireland Irish because they decided to side with England, and that's not particularly a great thing. That's the attacks have all been within the UK. It doesn't affect worldwide population. The Arab-Israeli conflict has really affected the world's population, mostly due to the emigration of both of those nations. So we take a look at Ireland for years and years and years. Um, this is all if we dig deeper, um, for hundreds of years, essentially, the Irish island was raided, conquered, uh, fought back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The English, who got so strong for so long, took over. Um, and genocide through famine, famous Irish famine in the 1840s. Uh, hey, could you help out with a little food? How about no? How about you starve? Uh, that breeds a little bit of hostility towards a people. So what do we have now? Um, we essentially have the fact that Ireland has declared independence. This is Ireland, okay? This is Northern Ireland. It's on the same island. There's a line. This is 30% of all of Ireland's population, including Belfast, the capital. These guys here want to be Irish. These guys here want to be English. That creates problems. Um, these guys don't like these guys very much. All right? uh, and because of that, they kill each other. Right? That's terrorism. Um, it's not war unless it's a declared war. Terrorism is a different type of war. All right, so let's get to more of the modern day stuff that we're talking about. Uh, how about, yeah, we're sliding through this. Let's talk about terrorism in the United States, okay? U.S. terrorist groups, do they exist? Yeah. 100% they exist. There are terrorist cells in the United States that are not ISIS related. They're performing terror acts here. So uh, the SDS was a left-wing group, super liberal group. Uh, they were militant. They wanted to change the government. This was, man, you're restricting our people. Very simply, what I did here, mostly the whole hollering over here was just to wake everybody up in the room. I don't know if that really worked or not. But again, if I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and you're not listening, is it between MLK and Malcolm X? If you study civil rights in America, MLK's preaching was nonviolent. Okay? We will march, we will be nonviolent. 
Malcolm X says, they're not listening to you, Malcolm. You have to crack them in the mouth to get them to listen. You extend that further and further, it be, it's past protesting, it's past marching, it's into terrorism. So one of the groups I want to talk about here is um, the SLA, the Symbionese Liberation Army. Were they terrorists? Were they bank robbers? It's hard to say. They're most, like, they're most known for kidnapping Patty Hearst, uh, who was the daughter of one of the largest newspaper men in America. It'd be like if you would have kidnapped Kendall Jenner. What? And I think the Kardashian family might care a little bit and said, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you don't pay us $20 million, we're going to kill her. What's interesting is they're a domestic terror group and Patty Hearst, if you think about Kendall Jenner and her role in America, she, Kendall Jenner has what? She's got clothing lines and all sorts of stuff. She hasn't really worked necessarily, uh, but she's doing things. I, there's Kendall Jenner fans in the room, I'm sorry. Uh, Patty Hearst didn't either, but what Patty Hearst did was she, um, she joined them. Uh, she suffered something called Stockholm Syndrome, where when you're abducted, you begin to like f have feelings for those who abducted you. They basically said, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to right the wrongs in America. Now, we're sorry that we had to kidnap you, but no one's paying attention to us. And you're a big name star. And now that we've captured you, the world's going to pay attention to us. And she was basically right, right on, man. Okay, I'm with you. No, let's do this. Give me a gun. I'm Robin Banks with you. <laughs> And so this is her. <laughs> After brainwashing, uh, robbing banks with a terrorist organization. So I'm not saying that this is similar to if Kendall Jenner joined ISIS, but kind of. <laughs> okay? Now that would be a news story for 2018. And you have a picture of, you know, Kendall Jenner in like a hood with a machine gun. Right? <laughs> that would be sort of what we're talking about. What terrorist group in the United States sticks out most to you? What's the most famous terrorist group in the United States? KKK. That's right. Okay, the KKK is the most famous terrorist group in the United States. Um, they've been around since the Civil War. Um, there was an uprising in 1915 when World War I happened. When there's conflict around the world, bang, there's a big noise over there. The KKK feels safe to come out. When it's quiet, they slink back to the shadows. When there's all sorts of noise out there, they come out. There's no bigger time, there's no bigger outside noise than 2017 with all that was going on in America. So you saw the KKK rising up again, all right? Sticking their heads out. Uh, they have used terrorist tactics for 150 years. That's inarguable, right? Blowing up churches? is the definition of terror attack, right? And this has been done. Um, riding through town with white hoods and horses and burning crosses, yes, instills fear. I want you to remember when we talk about, when the media talks about terror attacks, everyone goes, well, if I'm feeling fear, then they're winning. I'm not afraid. Terrorism is not, that's the wrong word. It's not about instilling fear. It's not about making you afraid. It's about affecting change through violence, right? And that's what a lot of the terror groups want. What would the KKK like? Almost everyone in this room dead. Yeah. Almost everyone in this room dead. That's what they like. Uh, Joe, yeah, you're Catholic, you're out. Frank, maybe you're okay. The women, you all need to go back into the kitchen and make me a sandwich. Uh, you're an immigrant. You're out. Uh, Irish Catholic, I'm sorry. You have to die, too. Uh, I'd probably be okay. Frank and I are all right. Okay? I don't think that's good, Frank! <laughs> Hell yeah! The KKK doesn't want to kill me! <laughs> uh, 
So then we start seeing um, domestic terrorism. Unabomber and Oklahoma City bombing are two of the biggest acts of terrorism on U.S. soil, both conducted by crazy white men. Okay? Crazy white men. Ted Kaczynski, Chi-Town represent, born and raised in Evergreen Park. This is our guy. Uh, he was what? I mean, he used to, this was, he was the Unabomber, right? So, like, he would, this was big when I was, like, in college. Uh, he would mail bombs to people. Just like it would wind up, like, and he did it real good. It was like UPS packaging. It'd be like if an Amazon box opened on your doorstep. You ever have an Amazon box show me your doorstep and you don't remember what you ordered? Yes. Okay? And you're like, oh, what is this? It's a bomb. Okay? And that's what he was doing. He would, oh, cool, a little UPS package. Did I order a book or something? Boom, you're dead. That's what he was doing because he didn't like the establishment. That's the Unabomber. Is that one, like, the uh, X-ray bullshit? Yeah. Uh... He, when when they were scanning, they would they would scan all the all the stuff that came. Uh, you were a little worried because he would he would usually hit like members of government or um, law professors, things like that. But you never know. Uh, and then Timothy McVeigh, uh, he was a war hero. Uh, he hated the government. He thought that the government was underfunding the military and leaving his brothers that died in the blood uh, and muck overseas. And so what he did was he blew up a building and killed kids. Uh, that was his big plan. Uh, not well thought out again, but it is the largest, still to this day, terror attack from someone who is a U.S. citizen. Um, and we could talk more about this, and, and I think I've mentioned it in some of my other classes. So we've got domestic terrorism, too. And all of this then, my, I was already at 20 minutes, all of this then leads into where we are today. My point here of this one, terrorism is not new. Terrorism has been around for a 1,000 years. Terrorism is not going away. There is no scenario that I can think of where you won't have an opposition group. When the opposition group gets upset enough, they're going to strike back, and there you have terrorism. Okay, so that is a as brief a history 